In this video, we're going to take a look at working with subsurface scattering effects using mediums in Octane for Maya. And for this video, I'm using the SpacePilot O2.MA scene. And I've already set up a basic subsurface scattering shader. Uh, now, before I get into how the shader works, I wanted to point out something that you can do when you're working with subsurface scattering that could be very helpful. Uh, if you go into Render Settings, you can create an Octane Passes node. So this creates the node that controls all the render passes for Octane. And I'm going to click on this arrow here to go to the attributes for this node. And under Beauty Passes, I've turned on Subsurface Scattering. And then I can set the preview pass to subsurface scattering. And this will show just the subsurface scattering in the scene. So this it makes it very easy to kind of, first of all, see how it's working and then allow you to kind of tweak it without the distraction of all the other lights. And then of course you can also switch back to beauty pass to see everything together. So subsurface scattering effects are used a lot in creating the look of skin. And a very common way to do this in Octane for Maya is to use a mixed material that blends a glossy material with a speculum material. So here we have the material that's applied to the head. Here's the mixed material. Here's the glossy material. It has a few texture maps included, as well as kind of sort of typical settings uh, to make kind of like a shiny surface. So a lot of these specular highlights in the front here you see are created courtesy of that glossy material. The subsurface scattering effects are created using this specular material. And the specular material has a scattering medium applied to it in the medium input connection. The mixed material itself for this character, since it's a fairly simple character, I just have the two materials and then a slider that blends the two together. So if I go all the way to one side, I'm going to see just that specular material, which has a very strong subsurface component to it. And if I go all the way to the other side, I'm going to see just the glossy material, which is largely reflective and has some texture maps plugged into it. Of course, you can plug texture maps into the specular material as well. That's kind of up to you to kind of decide how you best want to create the effect. If you're doing something like human skin, it's probably going to be a bit more complex than this particular material. This one is just kind of set up to give a general idea of how the effect works. Another suggestion would be if you had created a thickness map for the surface in a program such as Substance or something like that, you could use that uh, as a texture map input for the amount rather than just the slider. I'm just using the slider to keep things simple. So if we take a look at the specular material, it's pretty straightforward. I don't have a whole lot of reflection, although sometimes you can put some reflection in there to give sort of an extra uh, highlight on the surface. Um, roughness is set down to zero and index of refraction is 1.33, although sometimes you might want to use a different value for that. That's all pretty straightforward. It's just basically tweaked to get the uh, look that I want to achieve in the skin right here. The real important part, of course, is the medium node itself. In addition, I've also turned on fake shadows and this can have a big effect as to how the subsurfacing looks on your material. I've turned it on because in addition to changing the way that the subsurface scattering looks, which I think looks a little bit better, it also saves a little bit of calculation because Octane is not trying to calculate physically accurate shadows as it goes through this surface. Uh, and you'll see for the transmission, I had the transmission set all the way up to one, so it's essentially a completely transparent ob object. It doesn't look transparent because of the medium. So let's take a look at the settings in the medium node. So the medium node, I do have a color in the absorption and it is kind of this orangish color. So you can add a color or even a texture map there if you want. I don't have any texture for the scattering. I just have a value. And then for the phase, of course, this determines whether you get more backscattering. If it's a negative value, you get a lot of backscattering. You can see the top of the head here has a very bright color to it. Or if you move it over to this side, you get more forward scattering. So this means in this case, we should have strong backlighting. We're just going to see the, the subsurface scattering along the edges. So to me, that looks a little bit unrealistic. So just kind of bringing it down to a value that I think looks nice for this particular model. And then of course you have the scale, which has a huge input impact. 
um, what, what I can do to make this a bit more obvious is I'll take our mixed material and set this all the way to zero so that the only thing that we're seeing is the specular material. And then I'll go back to that medium and we can set the scale to a different value. If I set it down to one, you see for this particular model, it doesn't quite work because of the size of the scene. The, uh, the antennae here are becoming out are coming out kind of completely transparent. So that's not really what I want. So in this case, I just kind of uh, up to the value uh, until I got kind of the look that I wanted for the subsurface. And then the volume step length, you can sort of think of as being the quality. The lower this value is, the higher the quality, but the longer it will take to render. So if I bring it down to the default value of four, we'll get uh, a more accurate rendering of the subsurface, but it'll take a little bit longer to render. And then finally, you want to pay attention to the kernel type that you're using when rendering with Octane for Maya. You're going to get different results if you're using direct light versus path trace. So if I use direct light, it's not going to be quite as strong. So I'm going to switch this over to path trace and I get a much better looking effect. So you can take a look at this scene and, uh, and check out the settings used for this material. But that's the basics of creating a subsurface scattering material in Octane for Maya.